Metronomes can be everything from really useful to a complete pain in the neck. Um, when you start using them, sometimes the clicking can be a wee bit annoying, but anyway, let's, let's have a look at what they are and why we should use them. First really is, um, is understanding tempo. You know, when we talk about playing music, quite often you'll see at the very start, uh, and sometimes through the middle if there's a bit of a change in music, is uh, an indication as to what the composer would like the, the speed to be of the music. Now, for those of you who, who don't know, if your measurements are made in beats per minute, and uh, if you think about it, even if you think about something as basic as a, a clock, for example, even it's like a metronome, we know that within a minute we're going to hear 60 ticks from a clock, you know, as the second hand works its way around. And that would be, in the music world, if you wanted to call it that, uh, it would be 60 beats per minute or 60 BPM. So what is a metronome then? So a metronome is, I suppose, like a, a clock that you can change the speed up or down and depending on what speed you want to play the music at. So for example, I was just talking about how a clock could be 60 beats per minute, which would mean, you know, every click or whatever device it is that you're using would make a sound every second, exactly. Now, if you wanted to play something like a march or whatever and you were playing at 120 BPM, then that would be twice as fast, you know, but you can really do anything in between. You can go even slower and you can go even faster. So it's, it's really up to yourself, your taste in music uh, and, and what, you, what speed you want to either practice at or perform at. The, the good thing to know is why we should use one, even though they can be like incredibly annoying when they're just clicking in the background and uh, we'll, we'll get on to that in a minute, how we can kind of get around that. Uh, however, there, there are sort of four main reasons that I would suggest using them. The first reason would be to help develop steady timing. Um, you may or may not have noticed that when you're practicing, sometimes you can get to passages that maybe just go a wee bit faster and because they, they feel as if they should be faster uh, or you're just better at them than what you are at other passages. There's other times where you might find that you're, you're, you're dragging a wee bit and you're going a wee bit slow. What the metronome is is a kind of reliable way to hear what the tempo is. Uh, and you can then try and follow that. Second reason is basically, as I kind of mentioned, when you've got a tendency to rush, um, there's some music just you just want to go faster, you just feel as if you want to gallop ahead and you want to avoid that really. Um, it's a, the metronome's a good way for you to kind of pull that back in again and make you realise where you're going too fast. The third reason really is the opposite of what I was just saying. You know, if you find that there's some passages that you're practising or you're playing that just feel as if you're kind of dragging your heels a wee bit, like you're, you know, pulling the music through the mud or something like that, then uh, it's, uh, the metronome's a good way for, it to, for you to be told that that's what's happening. The last and probably one of the main reasons, I think, for a metronome is to help you gradually increase speed. So when you... When you start practicing, I mean, I don't recommend that you start practicing at full speed when, you, when you're learning a new piece. What I would say is, you know, just find a speed that's really comfortable, if that's half the tempo, or if that's slower, if it's, you know, it's closer to, you know, the full tempo, then that's fine. Um, what you want to be doing is practicing at the speed where you make kind of very few or no mistakes. Um, and... Once you find that tempo, then you can start practicing at that tempo until you find yourself really comfortable playing at that speed. And then what you can do with the metronome is you can start to just increase the tempo ever so slightly. You know, you just maybe put it up one or two BPM where you almost can't hear it. Um, and you start to just practice until you're really comfortable at that speed. Then you go up another couple of BPM and then another couple and just so on and so forth until you finally get to that speed where you're maybe starting to show some cracks in your playing. Um, and then you can work on those bits, back to playing, then start to increase the tempo again until you get to that tempo where you feel as if, you know, musically it just makes sense. Okay, before I talk about the metronomes that I use uh, in lessons and personally, then, you know, if you find this useful, uh, please leave a comment below. If you've got any metronomes that you prefer to use, then, you know, let me know what they are. Uh, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be great. Okay, let's talk about the different metronomes that are uh, available. Uh, the first one's probably the classic one that you've seen, you know, where the, the arm just moves backwards and forwards based on the where you leave the kind of weight on it. Now, these are good, you know, uh, and they feel traditional. Um, my biggest concern or issue with these is um, you can't be as gradual with them. The, the faster you get, um, the less, so there's, what happens is on the arm there's like wee slots if you like and you can move this weight up and down and it clicks into place every time you get one and it tells you what the BPM is. Now, the faster you get, the bigger the gap. 
Uh, so, you know, you may be able to go from 60 to 64, but once you get up to 120, you maybe have to jump to 128. Uh, once you get to maybe, you know, 160, you maybe have to jump to 170. Uh, now, what I mentioned earlier was when you're trying to increase tempo, I would always recommend doing it in gradual chunks. And sometimes the, the, the traditional metronome just doesn't allow for that, um, which kind of leads me on to what I would probably use most of the time. Now, uh, the application I use is called Metronome Beats. Now, there is a, there's a free version and there's a, there's a premium version. Uh, it's, it's a great wee application. Yeah, there's so much flexibility in it. There's, one of the things you can do is you can, you can obviously set how many beats are in a bar. Uh, you can obviously set tempo because it would be not a metronome if you couldn't. Um, and then there's, there's other features in it as well that you could have a, a click at the start of each bar uh, just to give you that feeling of where the downbeat is. Um, you can turn that off uh, and you know then you would just have straight clicks which is probably the one that I use most often. Um, there's another feature in it where if you're listening to somebody playing a piece that you want to be able to play, you can kind of click this button on it uh, and time with the music and it will tell you what, what tempo that is at, you know, and that's maybe something you could, you could work towards. And there's loads of other features in it as well, but that's mainly what I use and most of my students actually use it as well. Um, and again, that thing I was talking about earlier with the gradual increases, then you can, you can just move things up and down one or two BPM at a time or more, obviously, you know. Um, so that's that's a great wee application, Metronome Beats. It's, as I said, it's free or you can splash out some cash uh, and, and buy it. Um, the, the next one that I would use, um, which seems to kill my battery in my iPad for some reason, not entirely sure why, <coughs> uh, it's called Super Metronome, or Super, ne Super Metronome Beats. Uh, this is, well, it is a metronome, right? But it's also a drum machine. So you can actually go in and... Um, you can have a whole load of different styles of drumming, you know, you could get uh, pop music, rock music, funk music. Uh, you can change the drum kits to, to what you prefer the sound of. Uh, again, as per normal metronomes, you can adjust the tempo on it up or down accordingly. You can add swing to it, maybe if you're playing a wee bit of jazz or blues or whatever, you can maybe just, you know, swing the rhythm a wee bit. Um, and there's so much you can do, you can, you can play with the drums, you can, like, you know, do more hi-hat, less hi-hat, more snare, less snare, bass drum and whatever. Um, and yeah, it's it's a lot more fun. So if you're maybe practicing some pop music or something like that and you can't quite play it either in the key that it's in on Spotify or, or on YouTube, um, or you just can't quite play at that speed, then you you can you can adjust it and still have like a rhythm behind you so it makes you feel as if you're you know you're part of something. Now, the biggest advantages uh, of using metronomes, I think, apart from learning to control your speed, is you're introducing yourself to play with something else, you know, so it may be, um, maybe at some stage you want to play with a band. If you, if you just constantly play yourself at the piano and you don't ever have anything in the background, then it makes it difficult to transition into collaborative work. Okay, that's all I've got to say about metronomes. As I said, I used to have a student who called it the judge because she really didn't like that constant ticking in the background, but it does help. Uh, have a look around, you know, find a, a metronome that suits your, your needs and uh, yeah, let me know how you got on with it. Cheers. Thank you.